This is a Hot Pie Original. Uh, let's talk to a friend of the show. He has a uh, longtime political consultant to George W. Bush, John McCain, and Richards, among others. Also, the co-creator and executive producer of Showtime's The Circus, the greatest show on earth, which is about politics. And most importantly, he was once the editor of The Daily Texan, the paper of choice for the University of Texas here in Austin. He is Mark McKinnon. Uh, sitting in front of, uh, what's the background here? House plants? Uh, very nice. I'm in South Carolina today, Ward. I'm oh. out here and officiate a wedding. <laughs> okay. Uh, good for you. Good for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. t- t- two things. Let's let's start with the, the wall first. Um, and there's the, maybe you won't do this, there's the comedy aspect of the wall. Greg Abbott's wall. Uh, Greg Abbott's uh, donor financed wall, of which he now says there's three hundred ninety seven thousand dollars that he's raised already. Then there, there's that part of it. Why this? Why now? The reality. And then there is something I do want to mention or let you mention is your old boss, George W. Bush, had, I've argued, the most sensible approach to immigration that went nowhere fast. So first. Our border wall. Yay, it's going to happen, or it makes you laugh? Oh, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, the wall that Donald Trump was supposed to build was never really built, and that Mexico was supposed to pay for was never paid for by Mexico, uh, not a nickel. Um, I mean, it's a politi- politically popular idea, you know, for hardcore Republicans who think that, you know, most of our ills are because of, uh, immigrants streaming across the border and taking jobs and creating rampant crime sprees. Uh, so you know, it's, it was, it's, a, it's a popular Republican trope. And I'm not surprised to see Abbott sort of say, okay, well, now that we have a Democratic president, we'll just take over the wall here in Texas. And, uh, you know, the there have been private efforts to build the wall before, and they're under uh, federal criminal uh, indictment right now. That was, you know, Steve Bannon right. uh, had an operation funding the wall as well, and we saw where that went. So, you know, and I think anybody that lives on the border can tell you that the notion of putting up a wall is it's just absurd. I mean, first of all, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Okay. Um, I, I was hopeful you were going to say something and try to make some argument for it. Then answer this. He's offered no details. I even went on this show yesterday, went to the site to donate. It is... You wouldn't buy a loaf of bread for how absent it doesn't say anything. It just says donate here. In other words, be a jackass. Just send me some money with no description whatsoever. There's no one in their right mind that would invest, donate, give away a single penny on that app that I saw. How how is somebody getting away? How could somebody politically and financially get away with it? Well, uh, Steve Bannon did it and raised millions of dollars. And, you know, people are raising money left and right on the Internet over fraudulent schemes. And so just the fact that it's Greg Abbott saying, give me some money, a bunch of people say, oh, OK, sure. OK. Here you go. OK. Your old bosses, I, I haven't done it justice. I've argued and said, you know what, for all the, this is not a new issue. Great. What's, it's laughable is that anybody in the state of Texas to act like, you know what, I have to fix this now, as if they haven't been around a long time. You know, they had plenty of chances to fix immigration. Uh, every campaign cycle, whether it's Greg Abbott or Rick Perry or fill in the blank, Ted Cruz, they have the obligatory helicopter shot where they look like Josie Wales. And they get all serious. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna fix Josie this stuff, Wales. man. I, I'm like gonna, I'm gonna Wales wear, reference. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna wear well, my, fa- to it, <laughs> I'm gonna wear my fatigues. I'm gonna look like I'm a badass, and I'm gonna fix this stuff down here. Is, doesn't anyone say, hey, man, you've been around forever, and you haven't done a single thing, and now you're panicking? So explain what? your boss, old boss, at one point had I thought was a fairly reasonable and detailed plan about. An, an approach to immigration that I believe 
tied your citizenship to proof of employment. Was it perfect? Of course not. There is no perfect answer. But it seemed like a pretty good idea. It seemed like, you know what, I think most people get on board with that. You know, Jeff, it it it, it, may, it really makes you wonder whether or not people really want a solution. And it's just, it's more, it's that the Republicans uh, or, you know, people want to use it as a political weapon rather than solving the problem. I mean, to your point, I remember in 1999 campaigning with then Governor Bush for president when he embraced this issue and said he wanted to do something about it. And I remember I remember people saying, you know, oh, God, don't go there. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of a third rail. And, you know, uh, and he said, you know, listen, I just think it's the right thing to do. And, you know, he leaned in, as you recall, pretty, pretty strongly on this issue and on immigration generally. And he just told, you know, the naysayers, you know, screw you. I just think it's, uh, you know, something we need to do and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to talk about it. And he did. But I think about that now and how hard he tried during his presidency. Yeah. And he really did. He, did. he came really close with the president of Mexico at one point in 07, I think. Um, but, you know, I mean, 9-11 had a huge impact on on the negotiations and uh, lots of other things. But, uh, but. You think about that. That was 1999 to now, so that's more than 20 years that they've been talking about it, and nothing's been done. So again, I, it sort of makes me think they don't. They really don't want to solve it. They would rather have it to use as a weapon. Because to your point, Bush laid out a pretty reasonable proposal. He did. And, and remember, Ronald Reagan uh, gave amnesty to five million Hispanics in, yeah. in America, uh, something like that. So I don't think I don't think Republicans, uh, you know, or Trump supporters or whoever they are, I don't think they really want to solve it. OK, but he, they just want to raise raise money for, a, you know, some some bullshit. Yeah, thing. Well, exactly. And, uh, and you use it. to Well, and, you know, beat on Democrats. and I, I think to, in fairness, Democrats would uh, we could say the same thing about Democrats. Could we not? I mean, they just want to rant as well. Yeah. It's just a bunch of people ranting. Yeah, they, Yes, I agree with that. I, I think the same thing is true of Democrats, that they don't really want to solve it. They just like to use it as a weapon as well. And and really, you know, reasonable compromise is exactly the sort of thing that George Bush laid out. And I don't think either side wants to do it. Yeah. And, and for people that say, well, you know, I, I heard this McKenna guy knows his stuff, but where are the details? Again, I, I it's. It, there were details to Bush's plan. He had. And again, I don't think anyone, even Bush, didn't argue at the time. It doesn't solve every problem, but it's it's a it's a reasonable path that keeps us from the expense of loading a bunch. What do you want me to do? In essence, I think he said, and you know this. Do you want me to just load up a bunch of people and you spend the money to go take them back? No, they're already working. So let's find a way to get these people into the system. And he ha- and he, and he I thought it was. I might have disagreed with a lot of what he did, but it was one of. And and now we're twenty years later. We've not had anybody yeah. make a pitch. And Trump fans would say he made a pitch. What pitch did he make? It, 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 great point. Yeah. What is the Trump plan? Uh, you know, and so it's been a third of my life that w- that we've been talking about this and have made zero progress. You like my Josie Wales reference? I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, well, they, they all do I that. They all try to be. They all try to look like this badass. It's going to wear the. I'm in the desert. And I'm going to go get. I'm going to get some people myself. Kind of look, and it happens every campaign cycle. I laugh out loud every time I would see Rick Perry in the fatigues hanging out of a helicopter like he's in Vietnam or something. Yeah, and then this whole thing with Kamala Harris, you know, they're banging on her because she didn't go there. Now they're banging on her because she she's only been there once. You know? it's like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is ridiculous. John McClellan is the co-founder and creator of ATX Hot Sauce in all 50 states, now in several retail outlets as well. So we're going to turn it over to the social media rock chef superstar, and we're going to walk through a few sauces and why you should buy. We've done Beat Heat, so we're second in line now for the tasting. Don't forget, everyone, go to ATXHotSauce.com. So here we go. All right, so this one is our smoked habanero five pepper. We smoke habaneros with um, ancho, pasilla. Is that going to hurt? This one? No, yeah. this one's actually really, really good. Okay. This is like your traditional tapatilla, but yeah. uh, without the vinegar in it, right? And because of that fermentation process that yeah. we've talked about all the time. This one is great on sandwiches, pizzas, things like that. Uh, great on hot wings. Uh, I think you're going to really like this okay. one too, especially the smoky flavor with the adobe chipotle and the um, uh, the smoked habaneros. We actually smoked the habaneros um, before we... Uh, Does that go with the cab? 
this would not go with cab. This would go with the great Chenin Blanc, though. <laughs> I, I teed you up with that one. Yeah, yeah. That is good. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. It's just classic yeah. take. Uh, yes. Well, it's a new take on a classic item. Uh -huh. So it's called Smoked Habanero Five Pepper. All right, don't forget one ATX. Of my favorites. Don't forget ATXHotsauce.com. Um, there's a... What's going on in the show? What kind of, uh, other than the, the usual uh, buffoons that are out there, how's the show? Well, we're on break right now, fortunately. And, um, you know, the funny thing about it, though, Jeff, is I, I sort of thought that the last election would be a reasonable place to end the show. And I, I just couldn't imagine that there'd be that much interest with sleepy Joe Biden. And the ratings are higher than ever, which just amazes me, which I think testifies to a couple of things. One is just that people are just much more dialed in now about politics. They're, I think, partially because of Trump, also yep. partially because of COVID. People are just like, yeah, government actually is supposed to do something. And when it doesn't, we see what happens. And we see, you know, we saw the catastrophic effects of the failure to deal forcefully and truthfully with the COVID pandemic. And so, uh, but, it, but it's across the dial. I think people just are, are really dialed in and just have a higher level. And you may see that in your show. Uh, but it, it, it amazes me that, you know, they, they signed us up not only for this year, but for next year. And presumably if we go through next year, they're probably going to want to cover the next presidential election. Good for you. Uh, all right. So that's a perfect jumping off point. Have you heard about this? I, I just found this out yesterday. The the Serve America movement. The announcement. Uh, OK, well, it is. The goal is to fix the country's broken political system. The group filed its paperwork with the secretary of state Monday afternoon. Uh, David Jolly, Sam, executive chairman and former Florida congressman says what yeah, Sam Texas is creating is a coalition that is a true big tent coalition. Bring your ideology. We want to welcome it. We want to work together as Texans to solve problems in a way that addresses the greatest consensus among voters. Jolly said 40% of Americans identify as independent. And in Texas, it's as high as the thirties. In other words, they, they have filed the paperwork to be a third party and the third party is Sam and I assume it goes nowhere fast, but it feels good. It's kind of kumbaya, but maybe you think there's some some place for this. Go ahead. Well, I, I've been a big fan and advocate of third party for you know, most of my adult life. And uh, I, I know all the challenges. I, you know, I know uh, that historically there hasn't been much success at all, but I think the need is greater than ever. You know, I mean, there's just there's so many people like me who don't who feel like they're homeless. politically. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I still, you know, I'm trying to be a Republican, but it's awful hard because I'm certainly not a Trump supporter or, or support anything that uh, that's been happening in the Republican Party in recent uh, years. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, there's a lot happening on the Democratic side that I don't agree with, too. So. You know, people who are like me, who are socially progressive and fiscally conservative, don't have anywhere to go. And I just think, you know, if it, uh, so I'm all for. Well, well how do you. Right. Like I, I, I think everybody could could get on board with that mission statement. I don't think anyone is denying. Yeah. You know, look, there's a marketplace for extremists. Right. There's no denying that there's extreme. You know, you've, there's there's extremists. There's a fascist streak in this country that is real. But what you just said there's a giant pool of potential voters that are that. Why can't yeah. why can't someone pull it off? Well, I hope that they can. You know, I, I would support it. And, um, you know, I mean, the, the, the system's just stacked against it. I, I remember uh, an effort that I was involved in in 2008. Uh, it was called Americans Elect, same kind of idea. And uh, a, a funder for this effort had who started, but it was a really smart idea. And he recognized the challenge. And the challenge is you got to get on a ballot in 50 states. Yeah. And, and so what that meant was he had to go fund ballot signature efforts in 50 different states. Oof. And, man, you can't believe the stories, Jeff, of the, of the hurdles that the, the signature gathers had to go through in different states 
uh, and the secretaries of, of, of those states, you know, who were either Democrat or Republican, but either way, we're fighting those efforts and doing everything we could to keep them down. But but just to do that, and he and he got on the ballot in most of the states, that cost thirty million dollars then. So you know, wow. it's probably at least two x that now. So just to get on the ballot, and that's that's not even having a candidate yet. So that's a sixty million dollar uh, deal. So. That's that's the kind of challenge. Yeah, thing. yeah, but it, it. I think most sensible human beings think that it needs to happen. Um, well, listen, I mean, a democracy is a marketplace, and and it, you know, it, it may it may you know, I'm surprised it hadn't happened yet, but maybe we've finally gotten to the point where Trump and there's enough Republicans out there who just say, you know, who feel homeless like I do, say, okay, I'm gonna go support this jolly effort or whatever effort it is. Yeah. Um, why? Here, here's a question. So, but what do you do when somebody says, again, one thing about Trump is he has been, he is a dividing line. I mean, it's like that side or the other, he decides, his ilk decides everything now. His, his, I think you would agree, his shadow is over everything. Um, people get elected or not elected just because of him. So when the Democrats start screaming, oh, I see what you guys are going to do because the fascists, the knuckleheads that are in the Trump corner, they're going to be there no matter what. So all you're going to do is ruin it. So the next Trump, the next MAGA hat's going to win. How, how do you answer that? That, that? that sort of fear factor thing that says, hey, listen, McCann, and all you sensible people, yeah, yeah, we hear you. But if you push it, you're just going to let get that guy elected. Well, I I I don't I I'd say that, you know, that there wasn't that kind of an effort, uh, a reasonable effort or well-funded effort against Trump in 2016. And that's why he won. I mean, you don't you don't you don't beat Trump by just rolling over and saying, you know, that's all we can do. You fight it. And, you know, so that's that's what people got to do. And it's, you know, it's a steep hill and, uh, and a big rock, but you got to push. But would Democrats be right in saying, OK, look, uh, what is this? The Sam Party, McKinnon Party, those of you that identify as something reasonable and problem solving and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All you're going to do is just siphon off Democratic votes and it's just going to ruin it for everyone else. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think if you if you're a Democrat and you believe strongly enough in Biden or whoever, you know, your nominee is, you, you think that this kind of effort is just going to siphon off votes from from Trump or, or from DeSantis or whoever the nominee is going to be, I'd say, well, you know, go sick him. Fine. Why is politics more extreme? I mean, why have we done, you know, the days of Ronald Reagan would be a total, I mean, he would be called names today. He would have no chance, correct? He would have no chance whatsoever. Oh, no, he'd be, a, you know, he'd be a commie today. <laughs> he'd be a loser and a uh, punk and an old man and always drooling yeah, on himself. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, same thing with George Bush. I mean, both of them. Um, yeah. You know, that's, you know, why, listen, I mean, I, I don't, I have 24 hours to stay on your show and talk about how we got here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's a really long conversation. We're going to be thinking about that. And writing books but it seems it more difficult to get out of it, though, to, to the point of a third, fourth or fifth party, you know, whatever. This third party, again, sounds nice, sounds reasonable, but it seems uh, more difficult than ever. Uh, maybe. Maybe or maybe just the pendulum has swung and it's going to finally swing back. And, and something like this just hockey sticks, you know, really fast. So. You know, um, I, the thing that we know about things that happen in politics is you can't look in the rearview mirror to predict the future because, you know, things like Trump happen. And so maybe something like Jolly's thing will happen. And it's just the marketplace has to get to a point, point where it's 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 willing to accept something like that and support it. And maybe we're there, you know, to, just, to that point. Let's, 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 Let's not look back to look ahead. Uh, to that point, there's data. There's a poll out today. Again, they're throwing Matthew McConaughey's name in every one of these polls now, probably to get people like me to talk about it. But, <laughs> you know, he's still he's still doing well. I mean, is this the kind of thing that opens the door for McConaughey? Well, yeah, I mean, it's the sort of thing that would encourage him just to be another data point, you know, for whoever's in his ear, Roy Spence or whoever, to say, hey, look, this, you know, look, 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 look at what's happening. And again. You know, it's kind of the arena argument that Roosevelt made. You just got to get on the field and see what happens because strange shit happens in politics all the time. And Trump is exhibit A. You know, I, the hard thing for McConaughey is going to be, you know, just it's real easy to do this in theory. But the second you you know put your name on the line, then you got to start talking about what you're for and against. And then it gets tough. And you know, there's a reason why the, it ain't beanbag. 
Uh, Ted Cruz mentioned his name, and I thought, wow, I wonder if that means something that Ted Cruz decided to go there. Of course, he also tried to pretend like we're friends and all that stuff. You know, he tried to be yes, cool about yes, it. Dorky yes, Ted so always tries to be it, cooler than he really yeah. is. You know, my thing about Ted Cruz, he's the kid in the dodgeball game you hit in the face. He's the, <laughs> he's the nerd that can't defend himself, so you hit him in the face anyway. He's such a jerk. But um, he mentioned him. Is, De is Greg Abbott worried about him, McConaughey? Uh, probably just because it's, he doesn't know what to do with somebody like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's not a typical opponent. So, you know, it's, I, I think he'd much prefer, you know, a better O'Rourke or somebody where he, you know, he knows what that is. McConaughey is, you know, what do you do with that? And you don't, how do you attack McConaughey? Um, yeah. but again, if, if once McConaughey runs, he's got to, you know, what is he? Is he Democrat? Is he Republican? Is he, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, what, you know, is, is he, how does he stand on the wall, you know? And, and then he's going to start losing support. And Beto O'Rourke can't, can't criticize him, can he? No, no, he can't. I mean, that's um, it. Game over. Yeah, yeah. Wooderson yeah. wins. <laughs> All right, Josie. All right, man. Man. I gotta go. <laughs> you can feel free to use Josie. You're, you're, I do. Is, I, it, I, is I, it a family I, member? You brought that up because I hadn't thought about Josie Wells. Yeah, in Josie so long Wells. And, uh, but I'm a big fan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. right, you? So you're yeah. you're presiding over a wedding. Is this a family member? This is uh, this is actually a a, a a former Supreme Court justice, Harriet O'Neill, married my daughter. Oh, okay. Now her daughter's getting married, and I'm going to marry her daughter. Oh, okay. So we're just I'm all right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll re, I'm, I'm going to make sure because I was going to refrain from the comment, like you know, tell them not to do it or something like that. But I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Kick it hard, Gary. All right, hard. see ya.